Wi-Fi 7 is finally affordable after being out for a couple of years now. But does that mean it's worth it to switch over? I just bought a beefy new router with all the gadgets and gizmos a couple months ago. But then I realized that it was still Wi-Fi 6, not even the premium 6E that came out five years ago, which boasts better speeds and less interference if you have a ton of devices. Nope, we're just on 6. And apparently there's this cool new thing called Wi-Fi 7 that officially launched last year. But folks who aren't super duper in tune with all things tech news haven't heard of it until recently. Now that more devices are starting to adopt it, like the latest iPhones and the framework laptops. So I guess the question is, should I upgrade to Wi-Fi 7? Should you upgrade to Wi-Fi 7? And is it going to make a difference? And to test that, I suppose I'm upgrading to Wi-Fi 7. As the office has been expanding in size, adding more devices and handling larger and larger files, uh, while our wired network has been mostly fine, having the ability to still do things wirelessly is extremely convenient and our current wireless setup does leave something to be desired. A whole lot of something, especially when our entire team works on laptops. And yes, I do know hardwired connections are better. Laptops are just more convenient. While the raw video files on our server are tens to hundreds of gigs and six people can simultaneously be downloading Linux distros, streaming 4K videos, or be video calling the rest of the team across the globe, slowdowns and buffering are starting to become more noticeable. Will the addition of a Wi-Fi 7 router solve this problem? Or are we gonna have to wait until every device we have uses this new Wi-Fi before we see any benefits? And to answer these questions, I bought a Wi-Fi 7 router to see what the hubbub is about. Not just any Wi-Fi 7 router, I bought a nice one. This is the Ubiquiti Dream 7 router, a prosumer Wi-Fi router that puts a few features that you might find in professional networking devices into a convenient consumer-friendly package. That's right, for a whopping $279, you too can get professional level Wi-Fi. But is it worth it? Man, that's expensive. For a premium router, the box it came in was very bare. It's a plain brown cardboard box with nothing on it, aside from a QR code to their app and a picture of the device and some logos. Inside the box was just as bare. There was a router staring back at me, looking like an egg, or rather, like the main love interest from Wall-E, Eve, oh how cute she is, and a little accessory package. It came with a very nice feeling cable, and I mean nice. Instead of the typical rounded wires, it's now flattened to look even more sleek. Yes, I knew I paid a premium price for something. It also includes a piece of metal dimly labeled release tool for removing the memory Card, and a tightly folded paper containing 23 languages worth of safety legalese with three wordless hieroglyphs that you might find in IKEA instructions for furniture. First step, plug bottom into lightning bolt. Easy enough, this clearly means plug it into the wall. Step two, plug bottom most portal into internet. These are the same steps as any other router I've ever had to set up, which gave me confidence. All right, the moment is finally here. Time to feel that Wi-Fi 7 speed. But first, we actually have to put it together. I followed the simple three-step instruction but when I went to go plug my ethernet cable in, there was a little bit of trouble. Wi-Fi 7 is supposed to be five times as fast as the old Wi-Fi 6, but it can only do that if the cable connecting it can keep up. Basically, your Wi-Fi 7 router is like a brand new top of the line high-speed bullet train. It's built to go fast and carry a ton of passengers at once. But if this new train is running on old tracks, AKA the cables meant for the steam trains of the olden days, the top speed is still limited to the max speed of the track. So around the office, our cables are mostly 2.5 gigabit ethernet made of copper, but the Dream 7 includes a 10 gig fiber port. Ooh, it's made of fiber, not the copper of the olden days. Fiber is glass tubes that carry waves of light. Copper, on the other hand, are metal wires that carry waves of electricity. While light is faster than electricity and can travel farther before losing effectiveness, glass tends to be more fragile and more expensive. So we default to copper around here to make things easier and cheaper. We do have fiber internet at home though, so I should be able to just plug the fiber connection from my internet provider directly into the router, right? Right? Maybe, I don't know. <sighs> Not really. So I was able to plug in the SFP fiber connection into the Dream 7, but our internet service provider limits what devices can connect directly to their network. So I still have to use the gateway device, AKA the modem router combo thing that the ISP provides. And then they charge you a rental fee for it a year later. And that modem is the thing that's bridging the gap between our nice router and the internet. That means that if the modem isn't new and modern, 
modern and sleek, then it's gonna bottleneck your connection. Upgrading to faster Wi-Fi is one of those things that makes everyone in your home instantly happier. But you know what else will make everyone happy? Including your wife? Because you don't want her to be mad at you for spending $1,500 on a new laptop. It's upgrading your dining room chairs, of course, especially if they're from today's sponsor, Kalami Home. These chairs are a huge upgrade in our break room and makes eating lunch at work feel like I'm right at home. My favorite thing about them is the cushions. I can sit on them for hours during long meetings and not get that weird kink in my lower back. They're thick, soft, and just the right amount of support. The way the backrest naturally curves around your body makes you feel like you're getting a long, warm hug from your favorite person. Ah, yes, I am the little spoon now. And let's be honest, when you sit for a while, whether it's for dinner, scrolling on your laptop, or your morning coffee, your comfort matters. Don't settle for bad Wi-Fi and don't settle for rock-hard dining chairs. This is infinitely better than our previous situation. <laughs> Kalami Home nailed the balance between form and function. They feel comfortable, yes, but they also look fantastic with a dark sleek rubber wood frame and the cream colored cushions. If you're not into cream, oh wait, they call it beige. You can also go with camel. There's camel color and light gray, so matching your home style is super easy. When it comes to buying nice furniture, it's often super expensive and I'll admit, hurts me in my soul just a little bit. But these are surprisingly affordable and the price goes down drastically when you buy more. You can get them in as low as sets of two all the way up to a set of 10. Trust me, once you sit in one of these, you'll start wondering why you waited so long to replace your old dilapidated chairs. If you're ready to give your home a serious upgrade, check out Kalami Home. Now I'm sure I could call the ISP, wait a couple hours, and get the Dreams info added to my account, which I may do in the future, but I'm not trying to lose an entire day sitting on the phone while a robot voice tells me they're experiencing higher call volumes than usual. That's like every single day. There are also supposedly more improvements to Wi-Fi 7 that aren't just raw speed increases, like the ability to handle more devices. Luckily, looking at the ports on this router, one of the standard Ethernet jacks was labeled with a little globe symbol. That means internet. So I plugged a cable from my modem into that, and huzzah! The top lit up blue and the cute little screen showed a tiny loading graphic. Things were finally happening. And after a few minutes, the top changed to a solid white and the router used its screen to tell me to do the third step, which was to install an app on my phone. Now, why in the world would you do that? All this fancy, fancy premiumness just to get me to download an app. I hate apps, but I understand that it also makes everything a tad bit more convenient. I could have also connected to the IP address on the screen from a web browser, but I opted for the app method because not only does it seem easier, it also seems appropriate to set up a futuristic Wi-Fi router using an app. Everyone knows that in the future, everything requires an app. Your laundry, your fridge, heck, even your toilet, whether you like it or not. So with my app installed, I was ready to be walked through an amazing futuristic app experience, or I hoped I would. It connected to the router over Bluetooth. It ran me through all the usual steps of setting up a network name and a password. And while it gave me the option to make a ubiquity account, it wasn't mandatory. Unlike Microsoft, <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out on that. The account would allow me to monitor or make changes to my network remotely, which could be useful if I suddenly lose Wi-Fi. Very convenient that I can restart my router even if I only have cellular data. Okay, for that purpose, an account sort of makes sense. So with everything set up and seemingly working, it was time to answer the important question. Is this truly better than Wi-Fi 6? So when I tried to transfer a large file from the server to my Wi-Fi 7 enabled Framework 13 laptop, there was a bit of speed boost. As long as I was close to the router. Moving farther away with more walls separating me and the router, that speed boost was a lot less noticeable. That's because Wi-Fi 7 and 6E for that matter, use this thing called the 6 gigahertz frequency. Compared to a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz like you might find on Wi-Fi 6 and below, the 6 gigahertz radio wavelength is physically moving faster. That allows for slightly more data to get through, but it also means it can't go through things like walls as effectively. Wi-Fi is a lot like sound. When you hear music coming through a wall, you're far more likely to hear the lower frequencies like the bass, as opposed to the higher frequencies like the vocals. That's why you're driving down the road, all you hear is the dude's bass thumping next to you, but you have no idea what song he's actually listening to. So the short range of 6 gigahertz does serve a useful purpose. Shorter range means there's less competing signals in the air, simply because it can't travel as far. Unlike the old 2.4 gigahertz frequency, this thing has everything on it. You've got game controllers, gaming mice, keyboards, Bluetooth, 
things, heck, even microwaves. And then in 2013, Wi-Fi 5 came out, which also introduced the 5 gigahertz band. And while traffic went down, eventually everyone and their grandmother started using the 5 gigahertz band too, and it became just as busy as 2.4. Sure, it didn't have to compete with your lunch being heated up, but still pretty busy. Now that will eventually happen to this new frequency as well. Once 6 gigahertz loses its hipster status, but because it's not as good as getting around things like walls, it's probably gonna be less of an issue. This isn't super new anymore. 6E gave us this frequency already, and Wi-Fi 7 has most of the same features as 6 and 6E, but they added some more. Things like multi-user, multi-input, multi-output. Moomimo is a fancy musical sounding marketing speak for letting a router use multiple antennas to talk to multiple devices at the same time. On old Wi-Fi 6, routers would only talk to one device at a time, and just switch back and forth really fast, like multitask. Our spider crab looking Wi-Fi 6 router could use all those antennas to talk to four devices at a time per frequency. And it only has two frequencies, 2.4 and 5. So it can only talk to eight devices in total. So the dream smooth egg shape makes it look antenna-less. But there's actually six of them in there. That's the same as our crab. Wow, it looks good and it works better. Theoretically, Wi-Fi 7 increased the maximum number of connections from 8 to 16. But this specific device, the Dream 7 router, this can only handle two devices per frequency. But that makes it worse, you're thinking. Yeah, but also, no, it's better. And you'll see why soon. With three different frequencies each, 2.4, 5, and 6, with two streams, that means it can technically handle six devices at once. As long as those things aren't all trying to hog the 6 gigahertz band. But they will try to do that won't they? I mean, why not? It's better, it's emptier, it's newer. And this is where we find a new feature unique to Wi-Fi 7 multi-link operation. If a frequency is too busy with devices, it's not going to just switch to 2.4 or 5. It will actually use all three in whatever configuration is fastest. So while the Dream router has less streams, it can handle a higher number of devices. Honestly, not really clear. And what's also not clear is how this works together with the other Wi-Fi 7 improvements. There's something known as quadratic amplitude modulation also known as QAM. And what the heck is that? It just sounds fancy and complicated. Whatever QAM is, it's gotten better, which it has increased how much information can be stuffed into a stream of data through some sort of black magic. And there's also something about a channel size being doubled from that of Wi-Fi 6. That means the parts of the radio wave are being used are twice as wide. Basically, a larger highway means more cars can fit on the highway. Both these things are supposed to contribute to an increase of the speed of the connection, but also the wider channel size feature. It's not mandatory in all Wi-Fi 7 devices, so this could be only the Dream 7 router, not other ones. Both the latest iPhone and Frameworks 13 wireless cards still use the old 160 megahertz channel size, so they can't reach the fastest speeds possible, no matter how perfect the conditions are, or how crazy the router is. So then what even is the point? And this all begs the question, do you need to switch to Wi-Fi 7? The answer is probably not yet. It's certainly not a downgrade, but it's not a clear upgrade either. So if you already are on Wi-Fi 6E, then no, you probably don't need Wi-Fi 7. Most of the benefits of switching to this router are the features added by Ubiquity and not because of Wi-Fi 7. And this same thing where Wi-Fi 6E, it seems like it would be just as good. So in our case, we're on Wi-Fi 6, and 6 to 6E, that's actually a really big jump. But 6E to 7, not so big yet. Thanks for watching.